So in this video, I'm going to give you some examples and some demonstrations on solving equations that contain fractions. I think the key to solving equations that contain fractions is to see that it's very similar to the exact way that we solved equations when we just had integers in them. So for example, most folks can solve this equation here without any difficulty. 3x plus 2 equals 11. First, we're going to undo the addition of 2 by subtracting 2 from both sides. Rewrite the equation. We have 3x left on the left side. When I do 11 minus 2 on the right side, I have 9. One last step here is I need to undo the multiplication by 3. So to undo multiplication, I'm going to use division. So I divide both sides by 3. On the left side, 3 divided by 3 is 1. So I'm left with 1x. On the right side, 9 divided by 3 is 3. So there I am solving this equation with integers. Now the equation that contains fractions is going to be solved almost the same way. Notice in my fraction example, I have 1 third times x plus 1 fourth is equal to 3 fourths. So notice I have both multiplication and addition. Very similar to the way that I had multiplication and addition in the integer problem. Notice with the integers, the first thing I did was to undo the addition of 2. So over here in my fraction example, I'm going to do the same thing. I need to undo the addition of 1 fourth. Well, to undo that, I'm just going to subtract 1 fourth from both sides. Okay? 1 fourth minus 1 fourth is 0, which leaves me with 1 third x on the left side. Now, the right side is a little bit trickier, but not that difficult. On the right side, I have 3 fourths minus 1 fourth. Well, if I do that subtraction, I'm going to get 2 fourths. Now, notice back in our integer problem when I was right here, where I had 3x is equal to 9. Here I had to undo the multiplication of 3. Very similar over here. I need to undo this multiplication by 1 third. However, when we deal with fractions, we don't undo multiplication with division. What we do is we multiply by the reciprocal of the fraction. So notice here I have 1 third. The reciprocal of that fraction is to flip it around, which is actually going to give me 3 over 1. On the right side, I need to multiply by exactly the same thing. Rewrite my equal sign. Now notice what happens over here on the left side. On the left side, I get 3 over 3. Now 3 over 3 is just equal to 1. So I'm going to put this 1 around that fraction. On the right side, I have 2 fourths times 3 over 1. Well, with multiplication, we're just going to multiply straight across. So I would take 2 times 3, which gives me 6. And in the bottom, 4 times 1, which gives me 4. Now notice over here I have this 1x, so I'm going to leave that as x. Now on the right side, I need to simplify. So I'll factor the 6, 2 times 3, factor the 4, 2 times 2. My 2's divide out and left with my answer 3 halves. So again, I think the key is to notice that the process we use for fractions in an equation is very similar to the process that we use for integers. And to kind of see that they're the same will kind of help guide your work and keep you on track when you're working with the fractions. In the next couple examples, we're going to ramp it up just a little bit and involve more steps in solving uh, equations with fractions. Now notice again, I've given us an example with integers, and I've also given us a similar example with fractions. And I want you to see the connection and how similar these two solution processes are. First example with integers, I want to take a look at the equation. And remember, always our first step when solving an equation is to simplify each side. So I take a look at the right side here. It's already simplified. Left side, I do have some like terms. The 10 and the negative 4, I can combine those together to simplify the left side. So if I add a positive 10 and a negative 4, it's going to give me a positive 6. So I'm left with negative 3x plus 6 is equal to negative 18. Now we're down to the, the same equation we just got done solving, basically. I have to undo the addition of 6. So I would subtract 6 from each side. Negative 3x is left on the left side. Uh, looks like we're going to get negative 18 plus a negative 6 is going to give me a negative 24. One last step here to undo the multiplication by negative 3. I would divide by negative 3. 
A negative 24 divided by a negative 3 is going to give me a positive 8 for my solution. Now let's take a look at the fraction example. I'm going to simplify. Notice I have like terms over here on the left side that I need to combine. Very similar to the way that I combine the 10 and the negative 4. However, here I have to deal with fractions. And you notice these aren't going to be quite as easy because I don't have a common denominator. So I need to on my scratch paper. So go off to the side on some scratch paper and figure out what 1 half plus 1 fourth is. Well, first step, find an LCD. In this case, the LCD is 4. So now I need to rename each fraction. So it has this denominator of 4, my LCD. It goes in each of those spots. For 1 half, my missing multiplier is 2, since 2 times 2 is going to give me 4. So I make sure I multiply the top by exactly the same thing. So that's going to give me 2 in the numerator there. Down here with 1 fourth, I already have the correct denominator. So all I'm going to do is multiply by 1's. So this fraction is not going to change. So the answer to my question, 1 half plus 1 fourth, when I get the common denominators, is actually 2 fourths plus 1 fourth, which is 3 fourths. So now on my scratch paper, I've figured out how to add these together. So I'm going to remove this off the board here. This would just stay in your scratch paper someplace. So I know that when I'm adding 1 half and 1 fourth together, it's going to give me 3 fourths. It's going to bring down this negative 2x over 3. Remember that was a positive 3 fourths, so I write a plus sign in front. Bring down the 1 fourth. Now we're very close to what we had right here with the integer problem. And remember I had to subtract 6 to get the variable term all alone. Same thing on this side. On this side, I'm going to subtract 3 fourths. So I can get my variable term all alone. Well, 3 fourths minus 3 fourths is 0. So on the left side, I'm left with negative 2x over 3. On the right side, 1 fourth minus 3 fourths is actually going to give me a negative 2 fourths. So I have a negative 2 fourths on the right side. Now over here, I had a negative, I was multiplying by negative 3, so I used division to undo that. Well, remember with fractions, we don't use division to undo multiplication. We actually multiply by the reciprocal. Well, the reciprocal of negative 2 thirds is 3 over negative 2. So I multiply the left side by that, the right side by exactly the same thing. On the left side, I'm going to get a negative 6 over a negative 6. Well, negative 6 over negative 6 is 1, so I'm left with 1x, or just x. On the right side, I have some things to factor. I have negative 2 times negative 3 in the numerator, and then when I factor 4, it's 2 times 2, so I write 2 times 2. I have another 2 there. Looks like I do have a common factor here of 2, so I will divide a 2 out of the top, and negative 2 divided by positive 2 is going to leave me with negative 1. And I will divide a 2 out of the bottom, that will leave me with a positive 1. So when I simplify this fraction, in the numerator, I'm left with negative 1 times negative 3, which is positive 3. In the denominator, I have 2 times 2, or 4. So my answer there is x equals 3 fourths. Again, I think the real important thing here is to see the connection that when we solve equations with fractions, we follow the same procedure that we do with integers. I hope this video was helpful.